Oh my God, has it been forever? <laughs> My name is Jesse, and today I'm here to do my August reading wrap up. Yes, it has been a while since I've done a wrap up. I feel like reading wrap ups are something everyone enjoys, and I love watching them. But for some reason, filming them and talking about books that I've like clearly moved on past, I don't know why. But here we go. I'm going to try to make this more of a monthly thing. So hopefully, you guys enjoy them. If you guys do want to see more monthly wrap ups from me. Let me know in the comments. Also, before we even get into it, because I know someone's going to ask, look at this sweatshirt. Hanging with my ghouls. It's so cute. Not sponsored, but I wish. But I got this from Walmart in like the like juniors, slightly Halloween section. If you guys do get it though, size up. Like I actually went up two sizes and it actually fits me like perfectly. So if you guys are interested in this, I definitely recommend sizing up. So without further ado, let's talk about the books I read for the month of August. So I actually did really well. I think I read, what was it, 11 books? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 books. So for the month of August, I actually read 11 books, which is pretty average for me. Um, I honestly did not think I read that many books, but here we are not going to get into like reading stats or anything like that but I do have two books that I did not rate one two star one three star six four star books and one five star read so that is amazing I absolutely love it and as far as like an order of how I'm going to present these to you I'm just going to go in chronological because that's easier for me so the first book is Pack Up the Moon by Kristen Higgins. This was actually gifted to me from Gwen's Patreon. We did like a summer book exchange. So Sandra, thank you so much for sending this to me. I gave this one four stars. This is about a married couple, Josh and Lauren. And basically it is so freaking sad. Like I'm talking like tears at the very first chapter. So anyways, Josh and Lauren have been married. Lauren is really, really sick. I can't remember the exact like illness that she ends up passing away from but y'all grab some tissues but it is about Lauren basically giving letters to Josh on like how to like move on past her so you get like very irregular timelines so you see like the present day as Josh is trying to like process you know losing his wife and then you get chapters from Lauren who is trying to like not only go on with how much time she has left but also like she's still very much in the present timeline just not like mainly you get what I'm saying I gave this one four stars I absolutely love this one highly recommend if you're looking for something to get you in your field or want to read about married couples this is definitely one I think you should pick up the reason why I didn't give it five stars is I feel like I've read other ones that I enjoyed a lot more and this one was less romancy and a little more contemporary in a way and I wasn't like a huge fan of the fairy ending but I really appreciate it so hopefully you guys pick it up as well the next one is actually a cozy mystery so Keisha if you're watching prepare yourself I actually read buried in a good book and if you know my friend Keisha she absolutely loves this book and I feel like this has been her book of the year and honestly I see why she loves it, it is very very cozy and like just wholesome in a way. I will say this is probably my favorite cozy mystery that I've read. I'm still trying to get into cozy mysteries but I feel like they're just not for me. Like I don't ever feel like I'm going to give a five star to a cozy mystery but I'm still looking for that five star read but we'll see. So this is about a woman named Tess and her teenage daughter and they are basically going to be staying in a cabin and Tess is going through a divorce and like you know like all teenagers they you know just don't like anything but all of a sudden there is this big explosion and there is a falling I think it was an arm maybe it was a hand 
one of the two so it's definitely a cozy mystery of like what's going on felt like this gave like kind of like scooby-doo vibes and i just really really loved it and i highly recommend if you're kind of wanting to get into cozy mysteries i definitely recommend picking up this one i know there's three books and i think there's only going to be three books so it's not like a super dragged out long series so i'm actually going to pull up my goodreads review if i can find it here it goes so four stars overall really enjoyed this book i love the cozy small town vibes and it gave me the scooby-doo feels i love the characters most of all i love the relationship between tess and gertrude or gertie and the banter between tess and the detective i'm still very new to the cozy mystery genre and i do feel like this is the book that makes me want to continue i also want to shout out my friend keisha from the youtube channel a book like you for pushing me to pick this up you won keisha i love the book but it still wasn't like a perfect five-star read for me so if you have any cozy mystery recommendations let me know the next one i picked up i'm actually pleasantly surprised at apps that i love this one this one's more of a four and a half but it wasn't like a perfect five-star read for me so it is only a four star on goodreads but it is sherry lapinas everyone here is lying this one was such a whirlwind of emotions and I loved it it was so so good if you guys are interested in more thoughts on this one i actually did a whole weekend in my life type of vlog and i mostly read this book during the weekend and i felt like i really explained the book very well because i was definitely in the moment so i went into this book thinking it was about a man who is having an affair with um his mistress and his wife is about to find out but it's much deeper than that so not only is that happening but the man's daughter actually goes missing and he was the last one to see her alive and there's lots of lies and deceit and it's just really really good felt like there was a really good twist that i didn't see coming and the ending the ending was so iconic in my opinion so i definitely recommend picking this one up if you're looking for a good easy thriller nothing like too much depth to it i definitely pick this one up let's see so for my goodreads review i put four stars loved reading this one especially when trying to get out of a reading slump this book was very interesting because i was fully invested in the story and i felt like i was inside the story trying to solve the case too i would recommend this book if you're a lover of domestic thrillers and enjoy a suburban drama um, my only complaint is that i was not a fan of finding out what really happened too early i do think that the final chapter does very well at redeeming the book this was also not a mind-blowing thriller but overall i very much enjoyed it so this next one is actually my two-star read and honestly this one's really hard to explain because it's taken me quite a bit to like finish this one so i actually started this one i think back in like april and i just like every now and then would like pick it up but i finally finished it in august and i'm so glad i'm done with it so this book is a killer in the family by cynthia lodge and i actually got the neck alley arc for this one and yeah i just was not a fan of this one and unfortunately it was a two-star read for me but i do have quite a bit of an argument for that one so for this i'm just going to read my neck alley review for this one because i feel like it's just going to be the easiest because honestly there's a lot of details i'm missing i said went into this book realizing it was the fifth book in a series but i will say it was easy to follow along with without having to read any of the past books I felt like the book had a good steady pace and a good story slash plot overall really enjoyed the story but it wasn't anything i would recommend because it was not something i usually read it wasn't anything i would recommend because it's not something i usually read but maybe if i was asked about a detective series i could point them in this direction after reading this i may go back and start the first book and then i think snack alley and the publisher for allowing me to have an arc okay so the next book i have i'm really excited to talk about because i feel like i have been kind of hyping this book up quite a bit and i feel like this is definitely going to end up on my top favorite books of the year so i ended up reading the quiet tenant i'm not really sure how you pronounce the author's name so i do apologize this one again four stars for me but more of a four and a half it was just like super nitpicky things that honestly i can't really quite remember why so this one actually follows a serial killer but you're not following the serial killer in his perspective you're following the three women in his life you have his 13 year old daughter the woman that's falling for him and then you also have the woman that's locked up in a shed so really really good i love that you get 
different types of point of view it is kind of dark and very graphic so if that's something you're not comfortable with i definitely would steer clear from this one but if you love dark twisty thrillers Pick this one up um for this one i put more of a four and a half i really enjoyed this book so much honestly made my top 10 favorites that i've read this year i think it's genius that not only does this book have three povs but also snippets of other victims the writing is really good and i personally loved rachel's point of view being told in second person kind of like the you series so the only reason why I couldn't give this one a full five star rating was because the book ended with me having so many questions. I almost wish it had an epilogue to help answer things. Hopefully that was enough information for you. But yeah, this one's probably going to be one of my top thrillers of the year. So if you trust my judgment, I pick up this book. Okay, so the last set of books are all part of the Back to School Readathon. So if you didn't know, I actually co-hosted with my friend Gwen as well as Keisha and Liv. Gwen actually came up with a Back to School themed readathon and she asked us three to kind of help her host it and it was so much fun. I do have a reading vlog that I just recently put out. So yeah, so if you're looking for a good long vlog, this is definitely the one. It was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears putting into that vlog, but... I'm happy the way it turned out. If you want more specific details or when I'm reading those books, I highly recommend checking out that vlog, but I'm just gonna quickly go through the books that I've read through that. So starting off with a graphic novel, I've read Wait Till Helen Comes, and this one was a four star read for me. I feel like it's more of a three star, but I actually have read the original book that this graphic novel is based on so I feel like for nostalgic reasons I bumped it up to a four. This one follows two kids and their new stepsister who just recently move out into the country with their parents and they move into a church that also has a graveyard. The two kids don't get along with the stepsister and yeah the stepsister actually makes friends with a ghost and so definitely creepy and spooky perfect for the upcoming season if you know what I mean I actually read the original wait till Helen comes which I did not realize this had been adapted and I really enjoyed the story I feel like it was great so I pick it up okay and then my next book is the seven year slip by Ashley Poston this was my five star read for me and y'all I loved this book so much this is probably one of my favorite romances of the year and let me just tell you this book was so good that I was actually highlighting in the book not just that one time 112 really got me starting the highlighting trend but more highlighting. So this one is about a workaholic who definitely has a good promising future and her aunt passes away and she had a really close relationship with her aunt and she ends up moving into her aunt's apartment in the city. Turns out that she has a temporary roommate that her aunt had like subleased the apartment to and she's falling for him but he may also live seven years in the past. I know it sounds weird and crazy but honestly just like you know just go with the ride it's so good the romance the chemistry it's just it was such a I don't know cozy feeling while reading this one I absolutely loved it I wrote five stars absolutely loved this book I was very hesitant about the time aspect but after I stopped myself from trying to figure out how it worked I started to enjoy it more and more so trust the process I feel the chemistry between Clementine and Ewan was so sweet and I was rooting for them the whole time I also highlight in this book which I never do there was so many cute moments that I needed to document it I also loved how the author wrote the gr wrote about grief about a loved one and I can't wait to read her next books at this moment it's one of my favorite romance of the year so I definitely recommend picking this one up if it's on your radar the next two I'm actually going to just combine them together but it is sunburn and also who killed the homecoming queen these are both by R.L. Stein they're part of the fear street franchise I guess you can say I ended up not rating those and in my reading vlog I actually went over the reason why but to kind of give you the short version of it basically these books are 20 to 30 years old and so reading them in 2023 at this point it just seems unfair to give it a low rating a high rating so I just feel like at the time I would have absolutely loved this book when they were released or I remember reading them when I was 12. So I just feel like it's just not fair to read them. I overall enjoyed them. They're perfect 
for a readathon because they're like under 150 pages. So if you're looking for something like that that you don't want to take seriously, I recommend picking up those books. All right, two more books. The next one is a four star read and it is When in Rome by Sarah Adams. I actually read this the same time during the readathon as Gwen. And if you watch the reading sprints between me and her, we were kind of going back and forth because she was loving it. I was liking it. I know, I know but like, what are the sisters like? Sisters like I will fight you tooth and nail about this book, okay? So pick your battles, girlfriend. Pick your battles. <laughs> so I this is just not my favorite romance. And I think, honestly, after reading The Seven Year Slip, when in Rome just did not touch it. So it may have also been part of that. But it just felt very insta romancy. I also felt like it was a little over the top and I feel like the review I wrote is perfect so I'm just going to read that really quick. Okay four stars. I thought it was a cute romance. I enjoyed the small town vibes and the chemistry between Noah and Amelia. I didn't feel a too deep connection between them and I wasn't a personal fan of the pop star plot. It gave me Hannah Montana vibes and I personally just wasn't in the mood for that at the time. I also felt like besides the romance there wasn't much of a deeper topic. Um, I know Amelia has issues with her, within herself and her career and also her mother but I felt like it just didn't cover it a lot. Still thought the story was cute and sweet and I'm excited to read the next book featuring Annie because I loved the sisters in this book. So I kind of forgot to tell you what this book was about, but you have Amelia, who is actually Ray Rose, a con I think she's a country music singer, but she is very overwhelmed with her career. So she decides to go to Rome, Kentucky out of all the places in the world um, to just kind of get away. And she is kind of stuck there due to car troubles, but she meets Noah, who's kind of the grump in this grumpy sunshine scenario and it's a romance between them and it's super cute i think it's really sweet i don't think it's a five star read personally but i definitely feel like i want to pick up more sarah adams i might just try not to read a romance right before it and then the last one is beaches bungalows and burglaries and i gave this one three stars i know gwen is a big fan of this series and i wanted to give it a shot i felt like this was also my last like summer read of the year I guess you can say um I felt like this one was fine it was kind of it's very easy a very short read in my opinion and I felt like this was just like okay nothing special um but I mean I really thought the setting was cute so this follows a woman who basically is going through kind of a financial hardship right now her husband has been locked up due to like I don't know exactly what he was doing like a some kind of scheme but anyways he was kind of doing something illegal with money and so she has literally been left with nothing but this camper at this campground and there's a murder that happens at the campground and it kind of goes from there no one at the campground likes her because it's kind of a dump so it goes from there all right guys those are all the books i read for the month of august i hope you guys enjoyed a monthly wrap-up i haven't done one in literal months and i enjoy talking to you guys hopefully you guys enjoy this one if you've made it this far go ahead and leave me your favorite halloween emoji it could be like spider web a ghost pumpkin whatever leave me some like halloween emojis down there because it's approaching. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you guys all have a good one and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Hello Ramona I can't shake the simplest